Hey guys, I'm going to try to get back into reading Proverbs here, and I think for a little while I'm going to record with the e-sword like this. And uh, this will make things a little convenient for now. But we're on chapter 24, so there's only seven more, I guess, after this. But anyway. Okay, so verse 1 says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. So, it's interesting that it says envious against evil men when I would think that the point is don't be envious of them. Envious against them. Um, kind of just interesting wording, I guess. But we've seen this in Proverbs is always repeating a lot of ideas, and we see it throughout Scripture. Um, not to be desire, you know, how people seek gain through unholy ways, unrighteous ways, not to be desirous of them or envious of them. Don't even desire to be with them. And verse 2 says, For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. And so, I think in one way it says, it means like, what comes out of them is destruction, you know, they, they kind of seek to destroy, and they seek to cause mischief, but that's also what's brought in on them, and the people around them. The people around them, and, you know, they're going to be destroyed, and and they destroy the people around them, and they cause mischief to the people around them. Verse 3 says, Through wisdom is in house builded, and by understanding it is established. And uh, I don't think this is really talking about a physical house, but it's talking about, um, you know, kind of the frame of us, like our being. Um you know, a righteous life, a sturdy, you know, stable mind and stuff is, you know, wisdom builds that uh, good character, you know, kind of like our character, our reputation, I guess. Um, by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. I don't think that the riches are necessarily talking about physical and material riches, um, but more, you know, all the fruit of living a righteous life. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases, increaseth strength. I don't think that the strength and the strong is talking about physical strength. Of course, all these things... You know, it can have dual meanings. To where, yeah, if you if you have wisdom, you could build a, a house, right? If you know, if you have wisdom of how to get fit, how to get in shape and stuff, sure, you could be strong physically. But I think it's talking about um, strong and and righteousness ways like that. You know, strong in their character, strong in their faith. Um, where they stand. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. So, you know, it says not to desire to be with evil men, but we should be around wise people. But of course, the wise counsel is from the Holy Spirit, it's from the Scripture, it's the wise counsel of the Lord. By his wise counsel, we shall make thy war. And in the mul multitude of counselors, there is safety. And so, that could be speaking, like I said, being around other Christians, being around other believers. Um, you know, also, there's the Trinity. There's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Verse 7 says, Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. 
wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. So I'm not really sure what it means by it says he openeth not his mouth in the gate. I think the he is the fool. Is that it? Um, I don't know. That's something I want to look into. The wisdom is too high for a fool. Pretty easy to understand. Wisdom is far from a fool. It's the opposite. He that devises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person and have a bad reputation. People will know this person as a bad reputation. It's kind of like if you commit crimes, you know, you're known as a criminal or as a felon. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. I know the thought of foolishness is sin is a verse that's taken out of context a lot, I think, that I've talked about it before. Uh, you know, there's people say that any kind of a foolish thought is sin or something, like, uh, take it to a different extreme. But, uh, yeah, just reading it offhand here, I'm just kind of drawing a blank about how I really want to interpret that, but I'm pretty sure I've went through that before. I could probably just search my channel for Proverbs 24, 9. I don't know. But I'm just going to keep going on. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. We're talking about a wise man is strong earlier. So wisdom and strength kind of connected. And so if your strength is small, then your wisdom is small. Kind of, I guess. Um, if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul doth not he know it, and shall not he render to every man according to his works? I'm talking about the Lord. Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? Shall not he render to every man according to his works? My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. That seems kind of out of place to me. I don't understand really where that comes from. Maybe, I guess, the next part explains that. I need to just continue on. It says, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul when thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. So he's comparing the honey to the knowledge of wisdom. Hmm. So anyway, continue on. Verse 15. Lay not way, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth, riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. See the number seven used. So a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. And so you know, the just man makes mistakes, commits sins, asks for forgiveness, repents, and moves on. And so there's a difference between someone who's righteous and unrighteous or just and wicked. 
and the wicked just seem to be like an avalanche, like a snow snowball just getting bigger and bigger down the hill in the more and more mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him. Again, this makes me think of Stephen Anderson, just being so thrilled when people are slaughtered. And uh, it says, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. You know, and I mean, but this is something that, you know, we all struggle with because, of course, if there's somebody who's harmed us or whatever, you know, we kind of, we want to see, you know, we, I, I mean, seeing justice maybe is one thing if you're, you know, somebody committed a crime against you and then they had to be arrested or something because of that. Um, you know, you don't really have to be happy about the fact that you know, they're suffering, but you could be happy, I guess, because justice is served, but we shouldn't uh, rejoice too much in, you know, the fall of others. Whether they're a brother or sister in the Lord or not, or, you know, they're an unsaved person, or whatever they are. Um... And it says, you know, if the Lord sees you doing that, then, you know, things could change. <laughs> so, fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. Basically, almost a duplicate of what he said in verse 1. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. That's pretty awesome imagery the candle being put out my son fear thou the lord and the king and that also reminds me of revelation where it talks about the lampstands being removed or whatever i guess kind of just makes me think of that my son fear thou the lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change given to change for their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? More sayings of the wise, verses 23 through 34. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous. And we see a lot of that today. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. Say not, I will do... So to him as he hath done to me, I will render to the man according to his work. So this is basically saying, don't do an eye for an eye. Proverbs 24.30 I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And verse 31 says, And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. And then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. What does it mean, an armed man? We think of an armed man like armed with a gun today, but I don't know what that means. And this, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Hmm. Psalms 
So that's it. Uh, I thought this was a pretty good chapter. I know I just kind of read through some of this part, but I do think, you know, say not, I will do to him as he hath done to me. That's something that we need to remind ourselves, you know, not to get revenge. And, um, yeah, we need to live by the golden rule of do unto others as we'd have them do unto us. And we see that, you know, being slothful, you know, sluggard is a bad thing. Hmm. Okay, guys, I'm going to end that. I was thinking, you know, maybe in some of these videos I should just look up some of the things that I'm wondering about. But we'll save that because I'm going back through everything anyway. So, okay, that's going to be it, guys. God bless.